Hey, babe. Hey, hon. Uh, so a couple of people have wondered, like, when you were going to start showing up on the channel more. And I originally pitched around an idea that, uh, like, I really, I, I originally threw around an idea of, like, doing, like, little bonus videos in which I share MMO horror stories, and you've been, you've been in the business longer than I have, and usually when I think of MMO horror stories, I think of one in particular that you've shared with me. So, so, so I brought you on the channel today to ask, w will you share with the internet the story of, of, of your Mimesis online experience? Oh boy, this is a trip. Buckle up, kids, because <laughs> uh, this this is going to be a wild one. What did you initially title it when you told it to uh, me and Dan Fran for the first time? The story of Nerva and the infallible uh, rat? Hmm? The, story, the story of uh, Mimesis Online, or otherwise known as okay. the story of Nerva and the indefatigable raptor bat. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay, so my story begins several years ago, and I was fairly new to MMOs at the time. I had played a few games. This was back before World of Warcraft was a thing, so I had played uh, Ever EverQuest, uh, a little bit of Asheron's Call, uh, Ragnarok Online. Uh, I was I, I, I knew enough to knew how an MMO was supposed to go, but I wasn't too terribly experienced. Um, I did, however, have a little experience with uh, uh, near future and like sci-fi MMOs, particularly Anarchy Online and Neocron. And when I heard of a new one coming out called Mimesis Online, I was intrigued. Now I looked it up, and it promised three playable races. Uh, a host of psionic abilities, numerous horrific creatures to fight, and a gritty post-apocalyptic, uh, dark sci-fi environment. So I was kind of intrigued, given my familiarity with uh, Anarchy Online, which kind of has a similar environment, but a little bit less on, less on the mysticism. So I decided to give it a download. Now, this is back in the day when subscriptions were the norm for MMOs, and they would usually offer three or four days to a week of a free trial to uh, see if you liked it. And if you did, you would uh, sign up for a subscription. Nowadays, most most games use the free-to-play hybrid mo or hybrid models. But I digress. Anyway, so I downloaded Nemesis Online, uh, installed it, you know, the typical rigmarole, and uh, booted up for the first time. So, I get past the title screen, I go to character creation, and uh, I encounter the first of many red flags with this game. The entirety of the character creation screen, with the exception of two options, race selection and name entry, were mock-ups. You could page through the races, but the stats listed wouldn't change. None of the text and anything would change. And their races, and this is the second big red flag, consisted of human male, human female, and asexual Kirodon. Which was a gray-skinned, long-clawed alien race that kind of walked hunched over, kind of si kind of simian looking, somewhere between your typical gray and a chimp, but without fur. Anyway, uh, not wanting to pick one of the boring options because you, you're given a race selection in a uh, sci-fi or fantasy game. You pick human. No offense to the humans out there, but jeez, that is boring. At least to me. Anyway, I chose the hero down. So, I get into the game, and uh, I'm immediately introduced to this rather eerie 
uh, town square area that is lit in a sort of greenish fog. And there is a large floating, uh, for lack of a better term, trench coated figure uh, with a gas with a gas mask for a face greeting me. I'm like, oh, that's kind of intimidating. And the text box says, target the target the tutorial helper and type hello to begin the tutorial. So given that there are no other NPCs in the area, and only this large floating figure ahead of me, I figure that that's the tutorial helper. I mean, they wouldn't have made him so big and obvious and being the only thing in the area if, if uh, he wasn't supposed to be the first person I'm supposed to interact with, right? So, uh, I click him. I type hello into the chat text box. Nothing happens. I type hello a couple more times in case I, you know, maybe messed it up. I tried all caps and lowercase and proper capitalization and everything. Uh, nothing worked. I even tried hello in a couple different languages and nothing happened. So, at that point I figured the tutorial was bored. So, oh well. I, I, this wasn't my first round with an MMO. So, hell, why not just experiment and figure it out on my own? I mean, hell, I figured out Ragnarok Online with its completely uh, unintelligible tutorial at the time. So, hey, I, I should be alright. So, uh, I go, look, I go doing the first thing anyone does in an MMO, and that's uh, figuring out where you get new weapons and armor, and figuring out where you go to kill things for money to get new weapons and armor. Um, so, uh, I go wandering around the town for a bit, and I find a building that has a sign on it that has something that vaguely looks like a weapon on it. So I'm like, okay, this is promising, maybe I can get into this building? So I walk up to the door and push against it and try clicking on it and push against it some more. And sure enough, I got into the building, but not in the way you might think. I actually clicked through the building into its geometry. I then proceeded to clip through the building entirely and out of the world. I was walking around completely out of the world, outside the level geometry. <laughs> And, uh, looking at things, looking at things from the outside in, and it was crazy. And this is like Red Flag 4, 5? Uh, shoot, I've lost count. Oh well. <laughs> There'll be a lot more before we're done, let me assure you. <laughs> you know what? You know what? I'll, I'll do us a solid, and as I'm editing this, I'll just put a Red Flag counter up on, up on the screen. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had screenshots because this was trippy. Anyway, I was walking around through the buildings looking looking through them because they were only textured on one side. You could actually look through them on the other side and see the rest of the world. And uh, so I went around uh, looking, looking around outside the world, poking around looking for secrets or ways back in. And... Uh, I poked around for a, for a good 30 minutes before I saw another player, and uh, I tried to communicate with them, tried to say hello, but I think being talked to by a mysterious voice outside of the level geometry, talking to them from the other side of a building's wall, kind of freaked them out because they, because they bolted in the other direction just as fast as they could possibly go. Anyway, about 5 or 10 minutes after that, I managed to find a way back into the world proper. By uh, basically repeating the process I used to get out of it with a different building. Having managed to clip back into the world safely, um, <clears throat> my, my next goal was to get the absolute heck away from anything that might be construed as intervening geometry, lest I wind up outside of the world again. I figure if these buildings are going to freaking eat me, then poking through them for gear will... Well, it's something that could wait. So, I decided to make my way out of town. And, uh, 
I go out of town, there's this large ditch that might have been a moat if it wasn't dry, and uh, a very imposing bridge, and large looming figures that, uh, that are, that are covered in heavy, covered in heavy robes, have huge armored shoulder plates, and more of those gas mask-like faces. And I'm like, wow, those are the town guards. I, I feel sorry for anything that tries to break through here. Because, you know, I was familiar with, like, EverQuest and the fact that they usually have powerful town guards to keep, uh, PKers and monster trains out. Anyway, I go out into the wilderness, and, uh, it's fairly sparsely populated. I find one creature, and let me describe this creature to you, because this creature will be the bane of my existence for the rest of my time on this game. Now... Imagine a Velociraptor, and not like a real-life Velociraptor, which was probably small and fluffy and kind of looked like, probably kind of looked like some cross between a lizard and a bird. Imagine like Jurassic Park Velociraptor. Let's scale it down a bit to about the size of a large dog, maybe a Doberman in size, and uh, make it make it albino and very, very emaciated. Now, I don't remember the exact name of this creature, so from this point onward, I am going to refer to this thing as Raptor Bastard, and you'll see why very shortly. So, here I am, an unarmed Herodon, supposedly capable with psionics, and I uh, am entering into my first combat situation against this raptor-like critter. I, uh... I begin to engage it. I uh, open up the psionics menu, and I'm treated to a number of, well, for lack of better terms, shapes and runes in the menu. I try clicking on them or dragging them to hotkeys, but nothing works. There, there, there's, there's nothing there. I uh, quickly discovered that apparently all of the, all of the psionic abilities in this game are uh, dummied out the psionic menu was yet another mock-up. And uh, if, you're, if you're monitoring the red flag counter, this is yet another one. So here I am, a Herodon, supposedly capable of psionics, without the psionic abilities that I'm supposedly capable in, and uh, entering into a combat situation totally unarmed. Now if this sounds bad, congratulations, it is bad! <laughs> successfully recognize how bad this situation is. Um, but I give it my best go, and uh, needless to say, it goes pretty horribly. I uh, am steadily getting my ass handed to me. And uh, the fight is going to go south. I am going to die if this thing keeps hitting me. So uh, I did the only thing that seemed reasonable at the time. I turned myself right around and I ran back for the town as fast as I could possibly run, with Raptor Bastard nipping at my heels the whole damn way. So uh, I make it back to the bridge and those huge imposing figures that I assume are going to save me because in any other game that I've played with town guards, uh, they exist specifically to destroy creatures that are chasing people back to town in order to keep towns a safe and uh, secure area to do business. After all, if people can drag monsters into them, they tend not to function very well. Um... They don't do a damn thing to stop this raptor bastard chasing. Even whenever I'm running rings around them to try and get their attention, I would later discover that they, like a lot of things at this point, were mock-ups. They're not even actual NPCs, they're actual level geometry. So, uh... <laughs> uh I run into town figuring that the critter, critter will just give up whenever the town no combat uh, field or whatever takes effect. Um, that's not what happens. Uh, I get into town. I get just about ready, just about to the uh, to the town square area that I started, 
and uh, this thing's still able to attack me. And uh, I'm running out of places to run, so... Uh, having come this far and realized that I am without any sort of hope of survival, I did the only thing I could do. I turned around and attempted to fight back. Attempted being the key word here because I was promptly informed that I could not in I could not engage in combat in town. Yeah. This didn't seem to stop Raptor Bastard much, though, because he merely just uh, continued attempting to kill my ass, and indeed, successfully killed my ass. And there's the ding of the red flag counter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gets worse. See, after I got my shit handed to me by uh, Raptor Bastard, uh, I did uh, the only thing such a situation. I respawned, and uh, you know, I come back to life in the town square, uh, a little foggy as to my bearings, but I soon spot my corpse. And as I wander over close to it, I hear the trademark scream of a very familiar critter that was just responsible for creating that corpse. It seemed that Raptor Bastard was not yet finished with me. So, uh, here I am, getting my shit wrecked again, by Raptor Bastard, in a town, unable to fight back. Needless to say, I promptly left the second corpse. So I respawn, and look back at the other two corpses, and their, uh, and their still hungry slayer hovering over them. And, uh, I realize that the only way I'm going to have any sort of chance at all against this critter is to get him back outside of town. So, uh, I start running back towards the end, back towards the entrance of town. And unfortunately, uh, apparently you respawn with a very small amount of health. And needless to say, uh, I didn't make that run the first couple times. So, add a couple more corpses to the count. <laughs> Eventually, though, I, uh, the, I, I got cut a break. Because, uh, someone else ran past me as I was trying to run out of town. And Raptor Bastard, in his unrelenting thirst for the, uh, for the blood of the innocent, decided to leave me alone, since he'd already had a taste of mine, and go after this other poor unfortunate schmuck. So, uh, I was, I was spared his wrath for a little bit. While uh, Raptor Bastard continued to chase this other poor unfortunate schmuck around, I decided that you know, being eaten by buildings is a lot more pleasant than being eaten by uh, by the local wildlife. So it would probably be a very good idea for me to arm myself. So I go through the various buildings in town once again, looking for some sort of equipment shop, and amazingly enough, I managed to find one. So I go in, I talk to the shopkeeper, and, uh, I'm quickly introduced to a mistake I've made. See, by getting killed several times by this enemy that I had no chance of killing myself, uh, <laughs> I've apparently lost most of the money I started the game with. I don't even have enough money for a pair of bracers. It follows RuneScape rules. And not even retrieving my corpse has helped. Because apparently, apparently the money you lose when you die, uh, doesn't, isn't, isn't saved on your corpse. Or at least not enough of it to make a difference. It follows RuneScape rules, but worse. <laughs> uh, anyway. I left the shop looking rather morose. Uh, realizing that I thoroughly screwed at this point. And that's when I hear the familiar screech of my eternal tormentor. Raptor Bastard had finished off the uh, other unfortunate peon that decided to uh, arouse his anger and was swiftly coming back for me. So, as I look at that other guy's corpse slumped to the ground and him respond nearby. 
I see Raptor Bastard charging at me, and I'm just like, you know what? Enough is enough. I logged out. But this is not the end of the story. Close to it, but not the end. I got on uh, Tannhauser Gate's forums. Now, Tannhauser Gate is the company that runs Mimesis Online. It was a fairly small company, and I believe this was their first attempt at an MMO. I'm not exactly sure. Um, I related my experience on the forums and decided to talk to, decided to try and get the attention of some of their staff. And I'm like, your character creation screen is a mock-up. The psionic abilities you say that the Herodon have, have access to don't seem to exist. And your game suffers from some very, very critical flaws. In fact, this game is so buggy and incomplete that I have seen games in alpha that are more complete and more playable than this. And that's probably, like, the meanest thing you've said, because just, like, again, like, my, like, I know you. We've been dating for, like, four years now, and, like, you only really get mean when it comes to being critical of games. It's very rare, and they have to be a special, and they have to be a special kind of shit. Yeah. And I, I told them, what do you expect a player who has who comes into your game with no knowledge of it, to do. Have you ever considered what your new player experience is going to be like? Because this is mine, and judging from the other people I saw running around in this game, all two of them, uh, my experience is not unique. So I do get a response from one of the staff members. And they said that I should have contacted a GM via the Whisper system. To which I replied simply, What Whisper system? I didn't even know how really to chat in this game beyond local chat. I didn't even know this game had a Whisper system. I didn't even realize this game was complete enough to have a Whisper system. Given how incomplete everything else was, it's a wonder that even basic local chat worked. If it even did, because nobody ever verbally responded to me when I spoke to them in-game. And at that point, they attempted to dodge the issue a bit, trying to, trying to lay the blame on me for not doing more research. Keep in mind, this game is newly released. There is no research to do. There is... Not to mention, this is like back during the time of WoW. The the wiki rule isn't exactly near as oh, prevalent. Oh no, this was it, before no. World of Warcraft. So, wikis wikis were a new concept entirely. So, there was no research to be done. They didn't have an online manual or something. I I mean, they only had the most cursory of game sites at the time. So I told them, look, I'm not going to allow you to try and pin the blame somehow on me for this. Fact is, your game is horribly incomplete, extremely buggy, and probably the worst balanced and worst design experiences that I've had in, a, in an MMO in a very long time. I am canceling my account, and if I am charged in any way, for my time spent on this game, you will be hearing from a lawyer. That was my last communication with Tannhauser Gate, and that thread I did check out about a week later was locked. So, leaving Nemesis behind, I went on to play bigger, better, and m much more uh... finished. Yes, much, much, much more finished games. But a couple months down the road, I want to say about, I want to say about four to six months down the road, I came back and I'm like, you know what? Whatever happened to Mimesis at the time that I was away? Did they ever get their shit together? 
So I go back, I look up Tannhauser Gate's site, I look for Mimesis Online. There's no site anymore. There's no forums anymore. The Tannhauser Gate's uh, site is barely there, and there's a closure message for Mimesis Online. So, uh, apparently they didn't last very long. So, uh, anyway, I shrugged, I left, and I decided, well, I guess that's the end of that. I have, guess I'll go pay more City of Heroes. Yeah, I, ha I, have, I have a story for, for those who want to listen to me being an old fogey about video gaming. And, uh, some horrible, some horrible memories and a cautionary tale for anyone who cares to listen. But I did come back to them, to their site a few years later, only to find it pretty much empty except for a Tannhauser Gate logo. So, I guess the whole company went belly up or something. Anyway, can't say I'm, can't say I'm uh, sorry to see the back of it anyway. But that's the story of Nerva and the indefatigable raptor bastard. And it is probably my absolute favorite story that you've ever told me. And you have a lot of MMO stories. In fact, I do believe that there's one that you mentioned that uh, I may bring you back on again if uh, my if my subscribers express interest of it. Uh, didn't your cat manage to save an entire city of heroes, Ray? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, bless you, Miss Kidders. I wish I still had you today. <laughs> but yeah. Ah, uh, but that's a story for another time. Either way, just thank you so much, babe, for coming on and telling your tale. Yeah, you're welcome. I can't guarantee that, er that all the details are exactly as they occurred, but that's what I can remember most of it. Ah, uh, but yeah, if anybody expressed interest in hearing more of your MMO horror stories, I I will I will let you know. Alright. Until then, I will see you guys later and take care and thanks for coming on again, babe. I love you. Love you too, babe.